Look, man, uh, we're going to have to vote you off the show, Fred. It's Survivor? We doing Survivor now? Bro. Hold up. This I man got a this man got a haircut. <laughs> Who shaped you up? <laughs> Who right. shaped you up? Hold hey, on, Joe, man. You hit faded, Fred. Now I ain't gonna lie. You know I'm on Hold your up. side game. Out. You know I'm on your side game. I know, I know, but that none of this was in in in, in um in production meeting, man. We just talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> he saved that one. <laughs> he, right. we had to fight to get a meal. Yeah, wrongfully accused. We had to fight to get a pill. That's why we right to get a deal. He on the team, he gotta eat, you know. Spike, spike your skills. Fat. Keep it riding for the fam. You gotta like the we Obviously, as you guys know, uh, I had the opportunity to interview Roger Goodell. Um, you know, it was a cool interview. I, I've never seen Roger like this, so I'm excited to show y'all and get y'all reaction. So you know, let's take a look at it, and then I want to hear y'all thoughts. Hey. How is the Goodells handling quarantine right now? You know, everybody is uh, pulling together and obviously learning how to operate differently. We have uh, twin girls who are freshmen at college, so they're going online. And so everyone has to adjust. It's just, uh, it's what we're all doing and pulling together and, and getting through it together. If you are binge watching a TV show, what <laughs> show are you binge watching? <laughs> well, uh, the girls uh, got me watching Cheer uh, on Netflix the other day. Have you seen that one? It's about cheerleading in Texas. So I watched a lot of that. Um, okay. And that was fun. And I, there's uh, there's something else on their list that they haven't told me yet. So Yeah, there you go. I love it. There you go. Yeah, our, you? our commissioner watching Cheer. Love yeah. it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Kamish, 2009, our relationship began. Do you remember that moment? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'll never forget it. As a matter of fact, you know, when I, I, I've said this to you before, I think back about um, my time as commissioner and my time in this league and the things that I'm most grateful for are the people I've met, the people I've worked with, and the people that have overcome obstacles and your uh, your position a of that in my view and I, that makes me proud of because i see your success and i see what you're doing in communities and your family and it just makes me proud to see who, how well you're doing well i appreciate that and and i remember that moment uh <laughs> yeah I, I'm, I'm gonna say it commissioner cadell looked at me and it was like a coach moment a coach to player moment and you said straighten up <laughs> but it was a little it was worded a little differently <laughs> it, was, it was a little because i remember you pulling out that laptop and you were pay, taking me through the presentation you remember and, <laughs> and i said hey put that away for a second i want to talk to you yeah we got we, we, we got to talk and figure this out and I, what's going on and and by I, the way you did you you know you went you know you you figured it out yeah, Rod Smith was standing right there. He was in my corner, Kennard McGuire, McGuire, my agent, and they had my back. I had no clue how I was going to get it done, but I got it done. I think the, the defining moment for me in that meeting was I was like, I'm good. I, I didn't do anything wrong. And you literally <laughs> picked up 13 pages. You said, you didn't do anything wrong? There's 13 pages of crap right here. <laughs> That's good. Well, yeah. um, well, I appreciate you coming on to our podcast. This is House of Athletes. The name of the podcast is I Am Athlete. Um, we have some powerful people coming on. We just interviewed Dr. Oz. So now having you on is amazing. I want to I want to dive right into uh, the discussion of the NFL family. We saw owner Roger uh, Robert Kraft fly his plane over to China and bring back 1.2 million uh, masks, right? What else is going on around the league? How are we fighting COVID-19? What are you seeing from our players? What are you seeing even from our fans? Uh, what are you seeing from our owners? Well, you know, we're in that period of time where we're all trying to do whatever we can do, Brandon. And, and you know, Robert was able to, to have a plane and was able to figure out a way to do that, which was incredibly complex. But, you know, Shad Khan, who's in Jacksonville, you know, his his business is helping convert to uh, to make you know the the respirators and to to try to help wow. um, others in that area because he can change his manufacturing plant to be able to do that. Um, 
you know, so many of our owners are giving back in their communities to national and, and, and local cause. And that's what we all do. And so many of our players are out there and our players are out doing what they do, which is showing people that, you know, we all have to adjust. We, we stay home and stay strong. We have a campaign going on that to try to teach people, hey, listen, we all have to operate differently right now. And this is the right thing to do for your health, for your family and others, and the responsible thing to do. And our, you know, our players are great at doing that. And they're also giving back in their community. You're a great example of that. And so, and we're gonna, we're gonna be able to bring that all to light around the draft in a couple of weeks around our draft a thon where we've already got $45 million as a starting point in our fund. And we hope to be able to highlight the great things that our owners are doing, the great things that our coaches are doing, the great things our players are doing, and allow the fans to participate in that. And, and because they're doing great things too. This is a collective effort. We're gonna get through this together and we're gonna be better for it. And this is something we're all gonna do together. That's awesome. So you mentioned $45 million fund. Uh, there's some things that I heard out there, you know, collectively uh, from our players, our owners, the NFL, um, league office, the teams, right? Um, from time, donations, mass, you know, guys are literally given so much and it's around 43 to $50 million. That's a big deal. It's a big deal and it's a starting point. You know, that's that's how we're coming out of the gates. We hope to, to obviously use the platform of the draft to show, first off, our appreciation for you know our healthcare workers, the people who are on the front line, our first responders, the people that are keeping our you know our lives going behind the scenes, yeah. that are doing incredible things, and we want to we want to highlight all that, which is you know what we what we do so well, and then also provide the necessary funds and support for them to keep them going because they're they're struggling in today's environment probably more than anybody because they're out there working you know tirelessly on behalf of patients and and so many others, all of us. And that's what we want to try to do. Well, listen, I got to land the plane soon, right? Because I got to okay. be respectful of your time. You got so much to do. Um, but Kamish, you're a friend, but this is journalism. I got to ask a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't I can't have you on this show and not ask you one tough question. I got it. You, you ready? Yeah. All right. CBA. Yeah. Who won? And who lost? Everybody won. That's the great thing about the CBA. <laughs> it's not like a football game. You know, I think we all walked off the field saying, hey, listen, this is great for current players, for retired players. We've done a, a, a tremendous amount in that area for future players and for the game itself. And, you know, I, I think all of us are going to have the certainty we have a system that really is, I would say, more comprehensive than any collective bargaining we've ever had because it thinks about the game today and into the future. It thinks about how we're going to train and the safety of our players. It thinks about the economics and how do we work together and align our interests uh, in so many ways. And I think it's great for our fans, Brandon, because the game is going to continue at least for another 11 years without any interruption with a focus on how do we improve what we're doing? Is the, the look at should, should our preseason be shorter? Should our regular season be longer? Should our postseason be expanded, which we've already done? How do we train our athletes? And uh, what do we do in the off season to, to allow them to, to do what they do yeah. best, but do it safely? So, so much went into this agreement that I'm, I'm incredibly proud of it. Brian. And the players were extraordinary. Okay, there was a lot of give and take. Last question, because you talked about these changes. And when we turn on ESPN or NFL Network, uh, we hear the same things over and over, right? It's the same storyline, expansion of playoffs, an extra mm -hmm. game. Is there anything anything else out there that can impact the fan in, 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 the, in our approach to the game? Yeah, there's a, there's a great deal because, I, I again, I think I go back to we're trying to figure out how to do everything we do better. And, and in the current environment, but more importantly, in the future environment, and align our interests in a way that, you know, what do we do to make sure we're serving the most fans through our media outlets and, and giving inside access to our players? That was, there was a lot of discussion about that. 
how do we keep our players safe and healthy? And what do we do in that? That's important to our fans, obviously. So obviously important to our players and to our, their families and, of course, the NFL. So all of these things, I think, are going to have a huge impact. And as I say, it's, I don't think there's ever been a collective bargaining agreement that's been as expansive and transformative as this collective bargaining agreement. Chan, I'm just going to jump right to you, man. <laughs> you saw me hot? Yeah. Well, I mean, I just remember uh, Roger Goodell, year to lockout, him coming to the facility, and there was a little exchange there. So I know <laughs> y'all have y'all own relationship, too. I mean, I thought it was awesome to get Roger on the phone. It was. Uh, get him on a podcast. Bro, I literally texted him and said, I said, Onk, I said, Onk, when you got 10 minutes, call me. The next day he called me, and uh, as soon as I told him what we were doing, he's like, yeah, no problem, I'll do it. And I, I can't recall any time where we've ever seen Roger looking like that or not buttoned up. Oh, right. you know, he was in a barn. That yeah. got a barn? <laughs> what, a barn? <laughs> what was he at? I don't know where he at. <laughs> but think about that. He might be a bunker. Hey, that a bunker? He in a bunker. Yeah, safety bunker. Yeah, man. When you it's make $40 million a year, you can buy a bunch of shit. That's what Roger made, for over $40 million a year. Bro, a thing I didn't know about it during that interview Y'all talked about an early interview about y'all's relationship got built. A lot of people don't have a relationship with Roger Goodell like you have. Yeah. I know you talked about the meeting. We came to the facility. He came to the facility in 2010, <laughs> right before the lockout. And he had me hot. Yeah. Because he went up there talking to him. Yeah, we're trying to get the NFL together and we just want to play football. Da, da, da. When it's a, a lockout is two sides disagreeing. So I had to ask him. I said, whose side are you on? Player side? Or on the side, Fred. And this is Roger Goodell. He Fred, Roger's not even taking any questions, bro. He didn't even ask we're questions. We're sitting there. Him. We're sitting there, and literally, Roger's making his rounds, and we're all sitting there quiet. This is Commissioner Goodell. Thirty-two teams. He went to every team in 2010 preseason because they anticipated that lockout, Fred. Right. Mm -hmm. So he comes to the Dolphin facility, and he up there doing his spiel. And Fred, I had a problem. I I raised my hand like I was in third grade. Fred, I, said, I gotta ask a question, mother. Because if it's two sides, you <laughs> have to pick side. a side. So I said, Roger, what side are you on? Right. He got a little. <laughs> well, you know, I I I'm the commissioner. I want football to be played. Da, 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 da. So then I had a follow up, which you can't have a follow up. You don't have a. You're not supposed to ask an initial question. So I said, so are are you gonna lose money? If this lockout happens, or are we the only ones? No, 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 no. You said, are, are you, you going to take a pay cut? A pay cut, cut. yes. That's what you said. Are you going to take a pay cut if this doesn't happen? And he got hot then. I took an effing pay cut already. <laughs> he got hot, hot, hot on me. Hold up. So, did he say he, t he took an effing pay cut? Yes. <laughs> Rod Roger got hot. I, I don't remember that. Roger got hot. <laughs> and, and he got hot. He definitely. He, he got hot because it was not an answer and question situation. And that was the. That was the way I thought the commission and the players were. So to now watch that interview and to know how close you and Roger are, and during the interview, you said y'all had almost a coming to Jesus moment where yeah. you're sitting down, you said you were, your agent was there, a couple other guys were there, yeah. and it was a 13, 13 pages about you really <laughs> up. Like, I need to hear more about that. What happened in this meeting that be, made you and you and uh you and Dan Roger Goodell, Thelma and Louise? What happened? <laughs> what happened in the meeting that y'all are now best friends? I mean, I Man, I was there, man, really trying to finesse the situation. I knew I was facing eight games. Ooh. You know what I mean? I, I was facing eight games. I was arrested once. Uh, you know, the police was called. You know, I was f f eight, f probably five, six different uh, situations. DUI, uh, just a knucklehead. And <laughs> so, like, it got to a point where they were just like, we're done with you. We tried everything. We're done with you. So uh, we, we flew to New York because we're – you know, looking at this suspension, and I'm like, there's no way I, I can serve this eight games. So I'm just sitting up there, literally like on the stand. You got Roger Cadell, you got um, <clears throat> you got the the head the head of legal for the NFL. You have Rod Smith came with me, my agent uh, came with me, and we're just talking through it. And I'm just giving them my my side of it. And I came prepared, I had my laptop at one time. He's like, shut the laptop. <laughs> He's like, shut the laptop. So get hot for and then so you get so hot. yeah, he got hot. He that I was like, dang, this is supposed to be a commissioner. He right. buttoned up. And he was like, shut the laptop. And I was like, are you a commissioner? Are you my head coach? Are you my coach? Uh and, and then anyway, so he got hot. I got hot. I kind of sat up. I was like, hold up, man. I was like, look, I ain't doing anything, man. And he's like, You ain't do anything. 
he picked up the papers. He said, here's 13 pages of, I don't know, Raj, if you said <laughs> or if you said <laughs> crap. But he just, he said, there's nothing he got. He, he was super hot and he threw it on the table like, bam. And I just stood and I just sat back in my chair and I was like, wow. You know what I'm saying? I was like, okay. And I was like, look, you know, the situation is, the situ it's the situation. I think there's more to it. And then after I said that, I just kind of laid back and just let him run the meeting. Cause at that point I was like, I lost, Correct. it's over. <laughs> I got eight games, he might give me 16 after this. And that's some bread bread there. Woo. But, well, but now you call him Unc? Yeah, I call him Unc right now. Roger, Uncle Rogers. What it's crazy. Yeah, I, I, you, you, you picked one. that up. I heard you, you say Unc. I know what Unc means. <laughs> See, that, the, the thing is not everybody has an opportunity to experience that side of Roger Goodell as, as, as Brandon did. You know, but I'm pretty sure as they they dive into and watch the entire the full interview, you know, they'll have an opportunity yeah. to see uh, um, that he is human. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's running a multi billion dollar you know organi organization. He has to be uh, as neutral as possible. You ask him a question about the CBA, what side are you on? And in the interview, you guys talked on yeah. the CBA, so yeah. so I want to get your take. Yeah. You know, and, and, and your response that you can share with everyone on, you know, uh, what would you take away from it in terms of his position, his stance, because he 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 can't naturally show a bias regardless of what's going on. Yeah. You know, he's the commissioner of, of the NFL. Yes. Yeah. But at the same time, he wants to be for the players that he as he was for you. Yeah. Well, at the and, and on the other side of that, you know, he has a job to do with the owners, you know, with the players association, yeah. so forth and so on. So I just want to hear your thoughts, what you took away from it. Well, you know what? I, I, I would start with this, right? Because, yeah, I do call him Unk, but at the same time, there's been plenty of times where he's done things, and I was like, I just don't agree with it. Correct. But when I look at it from a business perspective, it's like if you're running a Fortune 100, Fortune, yeah, Fortune 100 company, right? Like, there's some tough decisions you, you got to make, especially when it comes to people. Not everyone's going to be happy. Right. So I've always tried to stand in the middle and see both sides. I remember going to the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 50 and first half, uh, uh, the first half of the game. I was sitting with with D Smith. Second half, I was sitting, sitting with Roger Cadell. You know what I'm saying? So I've always like like sat in the middle and tried to see both sides. And I'm saying that to say this, that uh, his answer, I felt like could have been a a political answer where it's like, you know, Everybody won. Uh, I don't know if that's true, uh, but I really can't go in the weeds in that because just being transparent, bro. Like I, I'm retired. I'm done playing yeah. ball. You know, I, I, I haven't, I Hold haven't up, been tracking up, the CBA. Up. We, we got to jump ship because a second ago you said you wasn't done. Now you're done. We, hold on, man. What the what? hell going on? I don't. Bro, you gonna take your big <laughs> back out there and catch a ball? Well, well right here today, as of right now, as question. of right now, I'm retired. I'm done. I'm, well, I'm not officially retired because you got to, you got, what you got to do? I've been, you got to I've sign been, papers. I've been out of the game for eight years. Yeah, you got to put that seven, the paperwork. I, I, I made a career change. Yeah. I retired from the NFL, but I'm not retired, right? Yeah. So you have to make, you have to make a decision, a determination on what are you? Are you just uh, waiting for a Can call? I be confused? You want to work out? Can I be confused? You a grown ass man. <laughs> man, you got three kids confused. I can't be confused. Do, do, do your kid do every morning, do they eat breakfast? Yes. <laughs> Does that mortgage come? Yes. Motherf no, you can't get confused. Well, well that, let's transition then to uh, the NFL draft. You know, there's no sports on television right now. Uh, so a lot of people are excited about the NFL draft, April 23rd. Mock draft. We said we was gonna do this. <laughs> oh, you guys you got your notes? We you got, got your notes. Picks? We, had, we had a hell of a time getting this together, but we got some notes. <laughs> All right, well, they, they, they say there's gonna be a minimum of 70 million people live streaming um, this NFL draft. That's a lot of people. Yeah. I do want to get y'all reactions a little bit about, you know, the NFL draft and your thoughts there. And then I want to jump right into the number one pick. And I think that's Fred Taylor, you on the clock. But I want to get y'all thoughts real quick before we even go in there. 
I'm gonna say real quick. I'm the best GM in here. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and make that known right now. And uh, so you feel good about your picks? 100. percent Yeah. Are you going to make the obvious? You going to do the obvious when it comes to pick number one? I mean, if it's obvious, it's obvious. I mean, <laughs> we, we can't run from it, <laughs> right? I mean, he's the best. You know, for for that position and team need, he's the best position yeah. player in the draft. Qu- quickly, Fred, wow. before 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 you say we we know the name before you say it. I want to say about the draft, I love, and all my criticism of Roger, me and Roger arguing, I love that he kept this going. There, It is a legit way virtually to do this draft. You don't have to be in one room together. The teams are doing their evaluations, and they're just calling guys' names. Wherever those guys are, all those guys can be on the damn moon, and it wouldn't matter because now you're a Jaguar. Now, you know, saying you're a Dolphin. Now you're a Jet. Now you're a Bronco. I got to go through a bunch of goddamn teams for you. Now you're, you're, you're a saint. Now you're whatever. You know what I'm saying? You can do it, and sports brings people so much together. And going back to the interview that you and Roger did, sports is that universal language. You don't have to speak the same language to know that you are a monster at wide receiver or is a monster, was a monster, whatever you're going to do. <laughs> How Fred was a dog at running back. That is a universal answer. So I love that Roger's keeping this draft going. And any GM that thinks they don't have enough time, like Fred just said, he knows his picks. He's done his research. This, not, this is not his job to research a player. So any GM out there, any, any scout evaluator, any of those guys, you've had enough time to look at these players and figure out what you want to take. So we're prepared to draft. We're prepared to take our guys. We, we both broke it down. We all three broke it down. And uh, Brandon had a tough time of dividing 32 teams by three. <laughs> And he no, was doing was mad. No, because Reg wasn't here. Bro, Fred was here first, so this so makes it said, easier. <laughs> Thirty-two teams. I said, yeah. I said, yeah, be more. She said, so it's four. I said, yeah. So that's um, <laughs> I heard a motherfucking pin going, Fred. I said, thirty-two divided by four. This <laughs> over to do a math. I said, that's eight. <laughs> God, <laughs> beep, beep. That's eight. How many beats we need for that? <laughs> beep, beep, beep. beep. <laughs> you just gonna call me out like that, bro? God. <laughs> 32 divided by you, you can, see can, that, can, right? Can, 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 we, can we use the N I just wanted to make sure it was right. I wanted to make sure it was right. Got a million people tuning in. I wanted to make sure it was right. But we broke it down. People were asking us about our mock drafts. We broke it down. A lot of people telling us, tell you who you would take at the position. So we did break it down. Cool. Reg had it missed tonight. So we broke it down. And us three have 32 picks. We did our research. And we're going to get into this draft. And Fred... You on the clock. You on the you clock. You pull Cincinnati number one. Who you take? Let's do this. All right. So we're gonna go just off top with Joe Burrow, Ooh. national champ. Uh, very. Uh, they say he's average. You know, average size NFL quarterback, average height, average ability. That's what they say. But it, when you roll the tape, I mean, the kid was just lights out. He has incredible accuracy. You know, he's one of those guys. If you look at Back in the days, 1985, Chicago Bears. And you talk about mm. Jim McMahon, right? Just the fiery, passionate, get out there for your teammates having fun with your teammates running around, you know, not looking like a quarterback out there. You're celebrating like some cornerbacks, you know, uh, cornerbacks that just got interceptions. But uh, I thought he did great at LSU. You know, even with the questions, about his production coming what in just one year. about his swagger and his attitude? You don't think that's going to get? You don't think that's going to get in the way? Is this another Baker Mayfield? I like that. You like that? I like like I told you a week ago. I like what you did out there. I like. Yeah. You got to be fiery on the it's field the if you're going to play for me. You All know, right. and I even even when you look at the goat, when you talk about Tom Brady, Tom, you don't see it all the time, but he's fiery. He's okay. passionate. Yeah. It's just a control, you know, passion. And I think that uh, I think Joe Hill he'll develop that. Okay. You know, being that they'll throw him into that role as the leader, as somebody who's going to lead. Oh, you got five seconds because organization. Took a, then we're going to go. Supposed to be ninety seconds. <laughs> I thought. I was well, yeah. I'm in the window. Let's right? slide in his number two. I got the NFC East. This is by far the best player in the draft, the most dominant player, multi-time pro bowler moving forward. I would bet my kids' private school, and y'all know about that, I put my pick here, private school <laughs> tuition on it. Number two, the Washington Redskins will draft Chase Young. Chase Young is a man-child. Mm. Fellas, fast, strong. The best player in this draft. Y'all know they value quarterbacks well, like they do. Well, he just said Joe was Bro. the best. Joe Burrow had one good year. 
Chase Young dominated every time he stepped on the field. He used to dominate his sister at Tetris <laughs> in the damn playroom at the house. Bro, Chase Young is a man child. Guaranteed all pro multi times. He's going to be the guy. If quarterbacks weren't valued, and I'm starting to understand this about the NFL, if you don't have mm-hmm. a quarterback, you can't win. Correct. I'm, I, I am going to prepare, and I actually hit B. Marshall with this before you got here, Fred. Chase Young is going to be Von Miller or better. Yeah, right. And that's that's the response I got. Yeah, right. Bigger, stronger, faster than wow. Von. Come on, that's bro. Big. You know, until bro. you put on NFL pads, you don't know what any of these guys want to be. And and Chase is going to be that dude. Chase is the best player I've seen in a long time. Like I said, for me, and I'm not just amping guys seconds. up. For me to compare guys to a Von Miller, Chase Young is special. And I'm telling y'all, at the end of this entire draft, we're going to get 32 guys in tonight, fellas. Chase Young will have the most Pro Bowls, and Chase Young will be the best player that comes out of this draft, period. I love this man. He's locked up. He's light-skinned. He even died his <laughs> I ain't mad enough to die my shit. So He died his so, shit. So, Chase right. Young, number two in the rest. All right, great. So now we move to Fred. Fred, you got... No. No, we're back. No, number, number I'm three. about to jump back up, baby. The, the Dolphins. Oh, the Dolphins. The put the put Dolphins. it up. Yeah, the, the Dolphins have acquired 14 <laughs> draft picks this year. <laughs> they traded away Larry Tunsil, their starting left tackle. They traded away Mika Fitzpatrick, their starting um, strong free safety nickelback. He was a multiplayer. To get as many draft picks as they have, they are going to trade up to number three. Steven Ross went to this young man's games. How many owners have you seen go to players' games in college? Steven Zero. Ross never went Not to many. Tua's games. Boy, Steven Ross is at Tua's games. What the f*** you talking about? I watched the man on the sideline looking square with his pants way up his guy. <laughs> but, but the question is, he is can't dress, but he can go to games. It is Tua. Your it's pick Tua. is Tua? Number three, the Dolphins trade up to number three to take Tua Tonga-Vailoa, the quarterback of Alabama, makes every throw special. I've seen him do Patrick Mahomes type stuff. Y'all don't know about Patrick Mahomes because Patrick Mahomes ain't going to the 20. <laughs> Tua Tonga-Vailoa is that good. I will overlook this injury. Bro, it is 2020. This isn't 1914 where an injury ends your career. Adrian Peterson tore his ACL, came I, back to win the Russian bro, title. I Tom Brady that. tore his ACL to come back to win three Super Bowls. And you're going to tell me a dude dislocating his hip can't recover? Tua Tagovailoa is better than Joe Burrow. He's better than Herbert. He's better than Love. He is the best quarterback on, in the on, draft hold on, hold right on. now. Hold on. He's the best quarterback in the draft. Tua Tagovailoa. So he's going to have the best career. Best career. Oh, this boy lost his mind. Yeah, Are you I think serious? so. You lost. But let's your talk mind. about you. You mentioned ACL. ACL is not a hip. The hip put away Bo Jackson, arguably one of the best. I had three hips. Ever but Bo, but I don't Bo, never played it. But it Bo, depends but on the severity. My friend, Bo had nerve damage and all that. We've already Listen. done the due diligence with the doctors that be, be, actually performed his surgery. Okay, okay. Saying uh, that you got he Tua, is fine. Shani Crowder, Tua, that, number three, work. the best traded up in the world. In the in the draft, I can't say the world. <laughs> I can't right. say the Let's world. Let's move Pat, to number I gotta four. Go Pat. I got to go. Pat to be the best in the world. Mahomes is the best in the world, but Tua is the best in the draft. Number four, your pick. Number four, Number my four. pick. No, no, no. That's the Giants. Oh, that's you. That's the Giants. I'm you're, you're still up? Jeff Okuda, the cornerback out of Ohio State University. Guys. Jeff who? Jeff Okuda. That's how you say it? <laughs> <laughs> where were your scouts? Where, where were your scouts? Okuda. I'm country, though. <laughs> Jeff Okuda. I, I might mess some names up, but I know. Lock, fellas, lockdown corner. 4-4. Four, okay. four, quick as a cat. 41 is vertical, legit lockdown guy. I watched him Ohio State this year, watching my man Chase Young. I would raise a baby with Chase Young. Me and him could adopt somebody. This man is special. <laughs> Say that. <laughs> I would raise a child with okay. Chase Young. I'm gonna be the husband. All right, I gotta be the husband. But Jeff Okuda, as I was watching right Chase here. Young, the guy just kept jumping off the screen, lockdown corner. I compared Chase Young to Von Miller. I'm gonna compare this young man to a Patrick Peterson. Not a Stephon Gilmore, who is a very, you know, intellectual, know the game. Patrick Peterson is a get in your face and make you beat me grown man. I'm, yeah. I'm going to test your manhood. Yeah. And as I watched Jeff Okuda, that's what he did at Ohio State. So at number four, I think the New York Giants now take the best cornerback, um, probably the best guy in the secondary, third level of football in the draft. And that's just Jeff Okuda, the cornerback out of Ohio State University. All right, well, it's on me now, finally. This dude, I don't know what's, what's going on with your picks, bro. Anyways, I'm picking at number five. All right, the, the, the smart, the mad scientist traded back. I'm taking the most versatile player in the NFL draft. 
Like, there's no one better. I know you talk about you're high on Chase Young. You want to have a baby with Chase Young. <laughs> we can't have a baby, but. That's what you we, said. We, I said we can raise a baby. We can't right. make a baby. We can raise a baby. Well, look, this guy right here, to me, could possibly have a better career. And this is a stretch, a better career than Chase Young. And I know I'm going to get crushed for this, but I'm going to say it anyway because I believe it. He can line up, bro, in the slot as a slot corner. He can line up on the edge. He's a linebacker. He's a safety. He's everything. Isaiah Simmons. I love Isaiah Simmons. People are going to look at him like, number five? Are you serious? Matt Patricia love that. <sighs> yeah, well, man. here's the thing. A lot of people think that, you know, this is not a Patriot guy. Matt Patricia coming from the New England Patriots, the Bill Belichick way, the Patriot way. Uh, they like those big bulky linebackers. But I'm telling you, man, the game has changed. You, the, the right. quarterbacks, how the, the quarterbacks are playing the game now. The new young offensive coordinators, these gurus, how they're just drawing it up. You need guys like this that can do everything. We need football players. This, to me, Fred, this goes back to like old school football, how we kind of grew up, where you do everything. It wasn't like, oh, you just played on offense or defense. You got to do it all. So this guy, to me, is the man. And that's my pick at number and five. And he can play all three downs. That's the main part about Isaiah Simmons I love. He does not have to come off the field. I'm with mm -hmm. you, bro. All right, so I guess it's me again at number six. So at number six, this is a nice one. This is easy. This is a layup. All right, Los Angeles Chargers. Phillip Rivers is gone. Mm -hmm. Did they do him wrong? They no, gone. man, Phil ain't this <laughs> What? <laughs> Fred T. <laughs> Bro, oh, no, talk no, no, some no. sense of this man. Phil's numbers. Phil has done something with the team postseason. What? That's true. What has Phil done for the organization? Phillip Rivers you know, is going it, to the Hall of Fame. But has the San Diego Chargers, now the LA Chargers, have they ever got a ring or got any prestige with Phillip Rivers under center? It, it just takes me back to the same thing they did with Marty Schottenheimer after going 14 and 2. You know, and then you question yourself, where's the loyalty in the NFL, right? I mean, uh, 14 and two playoffs, then to be fired the very next year, right after the playoff run, you know, it, it, from a fan's perspective, you look at it and say, damn, you know, what happened? You know, some fans maybe, have, maybe welcomed it, but even with Phillip Rivers, you know, he's a guy who's, who's very passionate, very fiery. He's going to get out there and play, right? And um, I think, They've tried their best to put the weapons around him. But when you look at systems, offenses, right? Uh, I would like to see Philip Phil and let's say uh, uh, Andy Reid system. Yeah. Yes. You know, maybe yeah. even as a backup to Mahomes Well, you know, he went to Indy. Well, so well, with I'm Frank. way off. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I, I need to get from under my Phillip. rock. Yeah. <laughs> but still, even, even in Indy. You know, he'll have an opportunity. Frank, Frank is smart. You know, he'll Frank, have an opportunity yeah. to compete oh, down there with what? Jacoby Brissett. You know, even though they just paid Jacoby, but I think as a veteran guy, more than nothing, he could take some leadership down there and just wait. Well, I'll tell you well, this. I'll, I'll tell you this. Play. I'll tell you this. They didn't bring Phil in. That's, they didn't know, bring Phil in to, to compete. That's Phil's job. Jacoby, which I thought they did him wrong. He needed to be going. You know, he, he needed to be looking for something else. Uh, Cause they did them so wrong, they but got I, rid of, they got rid of yeah, Phil but, to bring in who? But let me make my pick, all right. And and I can't before I make my pick, I gotta show love to Tyrod Taylor, who I think will really hold it down for the next couple of years. This ain't gonna be sweet for this boy who's coming in. Like Tyrod, Justin, has, like Tyrod, how you say it? Herbert, Herbert, Justin Herbert. Man, this dude has the best arm in the draft. He's six six, bro. He runs a four six. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a dual quarterback. Man, this dude's arm, he makes all the biggest throws on the on the, on the field. Um, he, he, he can do it all. The only downfall is for a guy that played as long as he did in college, he was too inconsistent, yes. right? That was the only downfall. Some will blame it on the guys around him in his situation. But this guy right here, to me, he's going. they're going to draft him, and he's going to sit on the bench for a couple years because Tyrod Taylor – to me, is the man. He ain't gonna sit on no bench. Tyrod Taylor ain't been nothing oh, in the sleep. league. You sleep. Is he, bro? What? I played against him. Consistent success has any of these guys? All right, all right, no, man. all right, all right. Go number seven. Who got number That's seven? That's the thing. I got number seven because y'all all want to act like these dudes. Bro, we got to be honest about these guys. Now, I love these guys too, and I'm friends with these guys too. I got these guys' phone number. Let's be honest with them. <laughs> At number seven, another individual that we probably all know, South Florida guy. Teddy Bridgewater went to Carolina, and Carolina needs to protect him. Tristan mm -hmm. Wirth out of Iowa, the tackle. 
If you watch this guy's film, he's old school. He's Jay Ogden, fellas. Y'all know what I'm talking about. What mm. Rob Stone, mm. those type guys, big, nasty. Yeah. Just, just teach some guy a lesson, and that's what Teddy needs. We saw Teddy with Minnesota. We saw yeah, Teddy with, boys. you know, saying with New Orleans and his three. It, it was a five game window, six game yeah. window. He had. If Teddy is protected, Teddy Bridgewater can be the best quarterback, one of the best quarterbacks in this league. Let's get some protection for Teddy Bridgewater in Carolina and bring in the big tackle out of Iowa, Worth. Number seven pick, I'm telling y'all, that's the direction they need to go. Here we go. All right. So I'm on the clock at number eight, Arizona Cardinals. We're going to take Jerry Judy, receiver oh, out of really? Alabama. You Why have not? Judy and DeAndre Hopkins and Larry Fitzgerald? Why not? Oh, my goodness. Why you like not? it? I got I like it. But who's protecting them, though? Best GM Listen, in the we'll world? we'll worry about that when we get to it. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, right now, this is the best receiver in the draft, in my opinion. Yeah. Such a natural route runner. I mean, he's great versus pre press, press coverage. Uh, his hands shown some inconsistencies. Yeah. But I think when he gets in the NFL, he worked with guys like Larry Fitzgerald, mm -hmm. Hopkins. You know, he'll have an opportunity to, to learn quicker and thus, thus that would mean he, the game would slow down for him. So now he's not out there panicking. So you, you, you couple those guys together, That's it's going to be a great, great tandem, a great trio, I should I, say. I, lo I, I, receiver, love, so. I love the receiver, Fred, but I just feel like you got this young quarterback and you're the best GM in the world. You got to protect your quarterback. Like why I said, not, why we'll, not go we'll over use, We'll use our quarterback's dynamic escapability and his athleticism to make plays, and he'll make those throws downfield right. when need be. Right. So, believe, as I mentioned, y'all believe in Cliff Kingsbury? As I mentioned, today, here today, let's talk about my receiver. Give him his due. This Give is his due. day. This is his day. Jerry Judy, number eight. All right, all right, cool. Now we're going to head over to Jacksonville with the number nine pick. We're going to Duval, baby. We're going to Duval. 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 <laughs> yeah, my stumping ground. You better believe it. All right, we're going to take D-Tackle. Uh, this is my pick. I was drafted number nine, yeah. number nine in 1998 by the Jaguars. So number, this is a sweet spot for me. Sweet spot. Right, so we're going to take Derrick Brown out of Auburn. This is greatness yeah. right now. Who? You better believe mm. it. Derrick Brown out of Auburn. Double team machine. Whoa. Money. He can play any position on the uh, on the front line, on the defensive line. Extremely versatile, a great pass rusher, demanded double teams throughout. And he played in the best college conference of them all. And you get down and dirty. Yeah, bro. SEC. Okay, okay. The Florida the, game. The SEC. What do he have? Like eight pressures, two sacks. Monster. The man had in the interception. Monster. He is a and monster. And he's going to replace Calais Campbell. Like the pick? I love that pick. He's going to replace Calais Campbell down in yes. Jacksonville. Mm, right, well, hopefully right, we can get back right. to Saxon. We'll see what happens in Duval. All right, we got the Cleveland Browns on the clock. Number 10, Cleveland has – they they attached their wagon to Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield right now very inconsistent. Um, You have to see if that's your guy. You have to see if a quarterback, if he's your future, like we're talking about Herbert, like we're talking about Tua, like we're talking about these other quarterbacks that we just talked about uh, Bridgewater going to Carolina. You have to see if the quarterback's a guy without protection. You'll never see that. I believe the Cleveland Browns select Andrew Thomas, the offensive tackle out of UGA, All-American, All-SEC, one of those big guys, the 6'6", the 320s, the prototypical guy. Yep. You have to protect Baker. Baker is going to hold that ball. Baker is not checking the ball down. Baker wants to go for something 20, like the pick. 18 plus. Have something to protect this guy so you know your old tackle. And speaking about Cleveland, who did they have at tackle for years? Joe Thomas Joe held Thomas, it down big and never dog. missed a game. Big, big dog. You have to replace Joe Thomas. Joe Thomas grabbed me one time, and I thought I had I, I thought I had a seizure because I couldn't move because that motherfucker was shaking me in the air. You have to replace Joe you Thomas. You seen him lately? He's about to be Marshall. Uh, yeah, he's seen yeah. all those old And I think Andrew ways. Thomas <laughs> is, is going to be that left tackle replacement that Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns need to try to figure out if Baker's that guy at number 10, the Cleveland Browns select. OT out of UGA, Andrew Thomas. So I got 11 pick, fellas. I got the 11th pick. If you look at what's going on in New York, I'm not a big fan of my man. What's a Doku player always playing on his iPad? Uh, who's the head bro, coach? Bro, this is the generation. Oh, the, I, but no, no, iPad, man. What's the man down in the Dolphins? Gaze, Adam, Adam, Gaze. Adam Gaze, goofy ass. <laughs> Adam Gaze is goofy ass. Always <laughs> saying silly <laughs> shit all the time. <laughs> 
What, I, I like Adam Gaze, bro. You I, like Gaze? Do his eyes, bro. What his eyes was like on the interview. Bro, looking crazy. <laughs> Goofy is <laughs> Adam Gaze. He has to replace Robbie Anderson. Sam Darnold, we don't know what Sam is in New York. Sam had mono last year, and that's something that only nasty people get. Because that's the people that kiss folks at the club. I don't know if y'all kiss people at the club. I don't kiss nobody at the club. If we ain't about to have no sex, you ain't kissing me. I don't just kiss for fun. But Sam Darnold, kissing folks at the club, he had mono last year. But seriously, Adam Gates, I don't really believe in him, but I don't know what Sam Darnold could be. So who are you picking? Sam Darnold has to find a replacement for Robbie Anderson. Robbie Anderson was a dog, a deep threat, a vertical threat, and Robbie is now with Carolina, and now him and Teddy are going to get together. They have to replace um, Robbie Anderson in New York, and they have to bring in C.D. Lamb. This is one of those Ooh. picks, first wide right receiver off the board, they can go back and forth. Other Alabama guys, Oklahoma receivers, there's a bunch of good receivers. Well, you know, we had Jerry go first. Jerry went first. Yeah. I'm telling you, I think CeeDee Lamb's better than Jerry. Fred hit on it. Very questionable hands. If you watch CeeDee Lamb, if a ball is around this young man, I, can, I don't give Brandon too much credit, Fred, but I got to do something. That man is not going to drop a football if it's in his catch rate. 100%. I right. see CeeDee Lamb right. that way. I think CeeDee Lamb is about to be one of the best receivers right now coming out in this Wait. draft. You're not the wrong. The New York Jets select C.D. Lamb at number 11 to replace Robbie Anderson and give Sam Darnold that weapon that he needs. Hey, you're not wrong there. There's a lot of talk around the league that he is better than Judy. Now, I'm not trying to start nothing with any teammates, but that is the talk. <laughs> All right, I'm back on the clock at the number 12 pick, Las Vegas Raiders. Ooh, mm. listen. <laughs> I'm a Bill Belichick guy. I'm a, a Bill Parcells guy, and the reason why I believe in them because they got it. They got the formula down right. Yep. The formula is you built your team trenches out. Yes. Right. So we got to solidify. We got to protect our quarterback. And now you know Derek Carr. They're going to trade him. They want to move on. I don't. There's a lot of talk there. I personally like Derek Carr, uh, but here what I'm go I'm going with is Mecky. How you say his Mackay. name? Mackay? Becton. Becton. Oh. 17% oh. body fat. Bro, two, Fred, if you've seen this man, ain't he? he moves like a tight end, bro. This dude is so smooth. It's unbelievable. And he's a dog in the running game. And you got to be able to do both, man. It's, 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 it's important for our offensive linemen to move because the defensive linemen they're playing against nowadays, man, those dudes built like linebackers and move like yes, linebackers. Go. So that's where we're going with the 12th pick. Las Vegas Raiders opening up the stadium soon, man, and, and, and making that transition. It's going to be fun to watch those guys. All right, I'm on the clock. <clears throat> 13, lucky 13. San Francisco 49ers select C.J. Henderson, cornerback out of oh. the best college in the oh, entire you country. Still Fred, the University of Florida. First of all, he's a big cornerback, 6'1", 204. Yes. I like he him. is going to replace Richard Sherman. He was a 4-3-9-40 guy, so he's fast, he's rangy, and he excels in press coverage. I don't need to say anything else about my pick. No, and Grantham. We know <laughs> see, at Florida, see, yeah, yeah. We know at Florida, Grantham, all he did was play zero and Listen, one. Man to man, I chest don't, to chest. That's I don't have to, all I, we do I, at Florida. I, this pick, San Francisco, it. a team that just, well, unfortunately, they took the L in the Super Bowl, but to be at 13, it's a great, it's a great slot for them. So to, to be able to get a, acquire a player on that sort of defense with that front four. Yeah. With Bosa coming off Listen, the edge. With, he's with, probably going to get defensive rookie okay, of the year. Three okay. first rounders up front rushing the quarterback. He's probably, and now they got CJ up. will probably make defensive rookie of the year. I like that. that pressure, wow, that's a stretch. It's, it's a stretch. I mean, but I'm optimistic. I, like I said, I'm with the best Chase GM in the game. Rookie of the year? Listen, they'll, they'll fight for it. They'll, okay. they'll fight all for right, it. All right. But you I got, think CJ is going to have a great season. All right. Who got? Who has 14? Bring it back. I'm here at 14, <laughs> Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Drek, Je, Jedrick Wills, OT, a tackle out of Alabama. That's yeah. a big pick right there. That's a huge pick. So he's a great run blocker, very athletic. He has to improve in the pass game, and we need somebody that's going to protect the GOAT, Tom Brady. Yep. But uh, I'll take my chances because we have to run the ball to take some pressure off of Tom. Down there, yeah, but Tom, he, again, old man need to be protected. He has to be protected, but with our receivers, you know, I, I think uh, as long as they can protect the interior, 
Tom has never flinched with pressure on the outside. If you run the tape back and look at what he did in his career in New England, even me in practice, when I spent time in practice, Tom wanted to always step up in the pocket. Yeah. The outside rush, it didn't phase Tom because he, he slides in the different slots in the pocket. So if you can protect the interior for Tom, then that's just way too much time for him. He's right. going to find I, his guys I, I, down I, actually, I like it. I actually like that pick. They, they I solidified love the their D line. I love the um, pick. They brought their guys back and, you know, got Tom coming in. Yep. Safe pick. Yeah. All right, great we, pick. Where we at? Safe back pick. to great, you? Great pick. No. Where we, where we at? You? Denver Broncos. Your, Broncos. your old team. You it's on team? me? The Denver Broncos. Look, I don't even got my notes here, well, but I know who we taking. Balls. I know who we taking. Who you have to? We need a receiver. And this guy right here, Henry Ruggs, when he ran a 4-2-7 at the combine, Jeez. you know what he said after? Ooh. He said, oh, man, I, I, I thought I was going to run faster. Wow. Bro, this dude is so smooth. He does everything, all right? This dude, bro, he's a returner. We know that. He returns kicks. He runs down on the kickoff. He's a gunner. Uh, he's on a field goal rush team. This dude is a – this dude will play 10 years at an extremely high level. Now, I ain't going to put him up there yet with greatness, but, man, this dude is a guy that you can throw out there. Man, you're going to put this guy at cornerback. That's how great he is. He'll lock somebody up. He ain't going to lock you up. He ain't going to lock you up. And I like people that go. But he going to compete. I like people that have threes and fours behind their name because that's some country shit. <laughs> and that means that he done ate a chitlin in his life. If you done ate a chitlin in your life, you could play some ball. The good well, thing I, about I like Rug. Rug his speed play. is going to secure my opportunity to be great on special teams, yeah. uh, that, which will allow him time to, uh, to grow and mature as a receiver. But the question always remains, who's going to throw him the ball? Who you is going to throw him the ball? Whoa. Well, we're good in Denver, bro. Who I'm just saying. We're, we're good, bro. With who? I'm just saying, bro. All right. Lynch? Y'all y'all keep. Lynch been gone, boy. You said Lynch. They bring a Lynch who back. Who y'all going to do? What y'all going to do? <laughs> let, let, him, let him ponder that. Move on to number 16. All right. Let's go to number 16. <laughs> All right. Who we got at 16? Atlanta Falcons. Man, Patrick Quinn, just a linebacker. Um. A lot of people will crush me. This is the second pick that they'll crush me for. Yeah. All right. This dude, man, the reason why I like him because his football IQ is off the charts. Okay. He's, his football IQ is off the charts. He, you can put him anywhere you want to, for real, for real. But I also like him because of his athleticism. If y'all haven't noticed, you know, my tone and my approach and my formula to the draft is I need guys that can move. Today's NFL – Man, if you're not fast and if, you, if you're not athletic, you can't play. So that's why I'm going with uh, Queen right here. And, um, you know, we're going to get Atlanta back on track. Yeah. Good luck with his rookie year with that last name. They're going to tear his ass <laughs> up in the kill locker him, room. They're going to get him. <laughs> They're going to kill him. Yeah, they I'm get number him. 17 as Dallas. And a guy that should have went higher, he had some – there were some questions about him from all the field mm -hmm. stuff. But, man, Javon Kinlaw yeah, destroyed – the senior bowl. He is that dog, South Carolina, old school. Fred, you brought up your boy Calais Campbell earlier. Mm. I think he's that type I guy. I was between him and Derrick Brown, man. But six, yeah. six, yeah. three, dog. 10, mm. running with a nasty intentions behind him. Yeah. Like he he ate cube steaks and canned <laughs> corn growing up. If you watch Javon Kinlaw, one of my favorite personal, personal, just watching the dude play, watching the dude interviews. Dallas needs to solidify that offense. You have Zeke, you have Dak, who's going to get his money. You have Amari, they just gave $100 million to. They have to, they have to address that defensive side of the ball. And I think Javon Kinlaw from South Carolina, defensive tackle, I think he's that guy. I think they'll move him outside if they want to get to a 3-4. They can't really play legit outside backer because he's a little too big. He can't cover. But everything else in football that can be done, he can do it. I think Javon Kinlaw is going to be special special guy and like i said he's nasty and i love nasty seriously is he still is on the 23rd will he still be here you think he'll still be available yes I, I i think nowadays people take too much consideration on off the field stuff or injuries with Tua. Yeah. i think people don't watch film yeah and that's the thing with ken law if you watch film b marsh you're gonna say this dude mm -hmm. is a grown-ass man playing with children <laughs> When you watch South Carolina, I'm an SEC guy, UF guy. 
when I watch him play at South Carolina, I'm just looking at him and he runs on the field. And now I, I, I is that is that an edit? Did somebody make him? Did they edit yeah. him to look this size? Six six three ten. This dude is special. I think a lot of teams get run off by injury and character issues. I got drafted in the third round because of character issues. It's not you get arrested every now and again, bro. You just get arrested. <laughs> Fred, don't arrest, bro. Thousands of people get arrested a day. So you're if not you concerned about guys got red flags. Oh, man, I ain't never red flag my ass. Go hit somebody and knock somebody to sleep. All right, all right, go to the Miami Dolphins. Next pick. <laughs> Number 18. There's gonna be a uh, there's a young man out of Alabama by the name of Xavier McKinney. If you look back at Dolphins history, they had Sammy Knight. They had Pat Sertain and Sam Madison and all those guys, all those great safeties back in the day. Then they had Jeremiah Bell. And then Rashad Jones Bell, stepped in. Ooh, they always love a versatile, strong safety. Can play in the box, can blitz, can tackle, can cover, can play deep half, can play deep fourth, can do everything. And Xavier McKinney from South Carolina can do it. Was the, was, I would say, was the, the, the keystone of that Alabama secondary for three years now. As you see those great corners Alabama has, you see those great defenses they have, mm -hmm. you always see him in the screen. You always see him making plays. The second, if you look at the Dolphins, they have Xavier, uh, um, Xavier Howard, mm -hmm. top five corner in the league right now. They just signed Byron Jones, top five corner in the league right now. Gave him 82 million. Yeah. They have to have Who's a Who's this, Todd right McShay? There. They have to have <laughs> a, <laughs> Bro, this is a podcast, bro. This ain't an NFL well, I know. I, I know these <laughs> I know these <laughs> more. I cover the Dolphins every day. If you have two top corners, oh, you got five seconds. What do those McShay. corners need? <laughs> what do those corners need? You call me McShay, don't call me that <laughs> Kuiper. I don't want <laughs> Kuiper. Kuiper lost me a bunch of money. <laughs> if you have two good corners, you need a safety. And Xavier McKinney you just out wasted, of Alabama is about to be there. You team. just wasted so much time on a terrible team. Who? The Dolphins? Yes. With Brian Flores? <laughs> I like I like Brian. They reloading. Waste I like my, I like Brian, time, but you ass. wasted so much time. You talking about the guy Broncos? Talking about they special? <laughs> f the Broncos. How about that? All right, can I go to nineteen? Go to nine. I'm sorry. Nineteen via the Chicago Bears. Um, we're going to go out to Las Vegas. The Raiders. Too bad. Too I bad. love this pick. This can be a sleeper, rookie, uh, of the year. Trayvon Diggs. This dude has the size. And he has the speed to cover a big receiver and a small receiver. Mm -hmm. And I also love his playmaking ability down the field. Teams are airing it out now. And you need corners, and that just can cover. But I want somebody who's going to get a pick six. Mm -hmm. And this is the guy for me. So out in Las Vegas, a Trayvon, stay away from the casinos. Uh, stay away from all of the madness out there and focus on your business. And we're going to be good. What if, what if somebody told you that your rookie year playing in Vegas? Bruh. Hey, B. Marshall, stay out of casinos. I stay might not out of be the trouble. You're going to be good. Bro, I might not be sitting I, here. Yeah, I'll I'm tell you sure a story you right here, right now. So I never told this story before. My third year in the league, I had to, I had to call Jay Cutler and ask for 60000 I was out in Vegas, and I lost all my money. Bro, you lost started at the Mirage. Was, lost my wallet. <laughs> Boy, you know how to give you the markers. <laughs> It's messing with people like Fred T. Like Fred T, they go before you. They know yeah. how to party, have a good time, right? So I'm out in Vegas. He's like, oh, you want to have a marker? I'm like, no, I'm good with my little 3,000, 4,000. He's like, no, you can take a marker out. I'm like, a marker? It's like, yeah, just put your, your, your information down your bank account, and we'll give you a line of credit. I'm like, uh, all right. And, and we'll also come up the suites and everything. Yes. They gave me, a, they gave me 70,000 at, oh. at the Mirage. For for. Uh, I a lost twin it. size. No, 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 <laughs> no. Twin, I, I had a, I had a, I had a villa. I had a villa. I had a villa by the lions, bro. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, I had yeah. A, did you yeah, have the pool? No, going yeah, I had the pool. You had all the pool of that, right? Out over the road. All of that. Yeah. So I'm at the Mirage. I lose seventy thousand. I call my people. I'm like, Yo, get me at the win. Now I'm chasing. So now I'm chasing. So I go to the win. I, I the lose another thing. seventy something thousand dollars, Oof. bro. I'm literally in the Mirage Hotel. <laughs> Uh, no, the, the Wynn Hotel, and I called Jay. I'm like, Jay, uh, I'm in some trouble. I need 60000 He was like, oh, sheesh, B Marsh. You know, Jay, you know, uh, it's body language. You, know, you can see it through the phone. He's like, all right, this is what we're going to do, though. You're going to sign a paper, some type of document. You owe me. As soon as I landed, he had that $60,000 check. I paid the marker off. We went back into the season, made my little couple hundred thousand. 
and um, you know, it went on from there. You let them get you get you with the marker. They got me with the marker, bro. man. Well, I'm hey, all right. So money or not, with the twentieth pick, <laughs> all right. With I'm gonna sound like Adele from the basement right now. <laughs> with the twentieth pick in the 2020 <laughs> NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Justin Jefferson. Ooh, wide receiver. Oh, LSU. I love this. He made like it this it. far. He made it this far. Simply put. Ooh. He's dynamic duo. So you remember number one, I took Joe Burrow. So they were part of the dynamic duo to win the national championship down at LSU. But Jacksonville, it's a need there. I like this. Yeah, it, it's a need there. You have a young quarterback in Gardner Minshew. Uh, I had to see and experience Minshew mania down in Jacksonville, and it is real. I mean, they absolutely love Gardner down in Jacksonville. Is he the real he, deal, bro? He's solid. He has he's some growth. No, no, he's, yeah. he's no, no. I can't. I can't. He's, he's only he's okay. listen, listen. I have to protect my credibility, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not gonna crown him uh, LeBron James of the NFL, <laughs> but he's a good he's a good player, right? So and, can uh, I still down think for 10 years? He, there's a lot more maturation that needs to take place. He, you can see um, the errant throws, the, the decision making isn't quite there yet, but he has the velocity. He has a huge heart. You know, mm. he's scrappy mm. uh, and, and he had, he's shown some accuracy. The question mark was uh, uh, his arm strength. Yeah. He, he went and showed people that he can make those throws. All right, so what you're and saying he is he's going to hold it down for the next 10, 15 years. That's cool. I, I'm not that. saying that because the <laughs> NFL is tricky. But I do like so, your pick, though. I, I'm not saying no. that. I, and, and personally, I would love for him to be that guy. If he's in Jacksonville 10, 15 years, some good things are happening. Yeah. So Spanish. back to Justin Jefferson. You know, he's going to uh, couple with DJ Chark on the other side. And I think being 6'1", 202, you know, he ran a 4'4", 340, and he's great in the slot. You know, big hands. Big hands. You know, hands. a guy who, who, who draws so much attention. But what impresses me most about this kid is his ability to maneuver in zone coverage. Mm. You know, he hadn't shown great, you know, upside versus man. But working the slot against linebackers, you know, at that size, I mean, there's going to be some opportunities for him to excel. Bro, he has the strongest hands in the draft. Justin Jefferson. Man, he don't catch the ball. He, like, snatches the ball. So, yeah, I love him. That's the only question with, with Joe Burrow. He has so many weapons. Yeah, hey, that's people, not your pick. That's not your I'm pick. I'm just saying, you but gotta, people question. You on the clock. With, with, having, seconds, with having guys like Justin Jefferson, Joe Burrow with the 60 touchdowns get questioned because he had dogs out there catching two-yard ball and getting them 60 yards. At the 21st pick for the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles, they brought in two corners. They addressed a lot of the secondary in free agency. Now they have to address this front seven. Kenneth Murray, the linebacker at Oklahoma, fellas, he's he 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 he's they got him as 241. He's a 250. He's a legit middle linebacker. He's a banger, a buster. Old a school. Old school. You want to the Zach Thomases, the Ray Lewises. They ran all of them. Over. The Patrick yeah. Willis's. All, all yeah. of them. Hey. I didn't play Patrick, but yeah, everybody Patrick. else, yeah. Just that old uh, school. You hear, you I'm just telling you. Ray Lewis? He yeah, Ray got the business. Yeah, he gave, he he gave Ray that. Gave we used Ray to play Ravens twice a year, so he wants some, I want some. It, I yeah. ran him over, I ran him, I shook him, whatever it took. I, I made it happen. Hey, fact, that fact, what yeah. they say? Bro. What, what, what? Uncle Fred, where we at? Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Freddy. Facts. Ah, Uncle Fred. <laughs> okay. Hey, yeah. Uncle, Uncle, I appreciate it, Uncle. But You're lucky you ain't getting none. Like I, I catch your ass. I would out take there. a sheet shots on you, Fred. All I would do is wait for a n- I already knew I had to right hey, report right, on you. You good with your pick? I'm going to take Kenneth Murray. Like I said, they address the secondary. The Eagle, they put a lot of money into their offense. They're trying to figure out the receiver position, trying to put some yeah. around Wentz and all that stuff. But they have to find a backer, and I think they find the guy they want with Murray out of Oklahoma. He's old school. He might get some personal fouls. I don't want to say he's Vontez Burfick, but he, he's built in an old school fashion. But you're not going to be able to run the ball from B gap to B gap. This boy's Todd McShay. When Murray's in the game. Boy, you know you know college football. Boy. Yes, sir. I don't know nothing about college football. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. I, I had to do a little research for this draft. But I don't know nothing about no college ball. <laughs> All right, here we go. 22nd pick, Minnesota Vikings via the Buffalo Bills. Woo! I don't know how this guy lasted this long. Denzel Mims. Oh. Wide oh. receiver, Baylor. Yes. When you talk about combines, like if you just want to, if you want to go off of like who had the best combine, like this dude had the best combine. All right. And not only did he have the best combine, he also had the best senior bowl against the top talent 
when it comes to the cornerback right. position. Like just absolutely crushed it. This dude, uh, he's a he's a solid he's a solid number two. Uh, he could potentially work his way up to a number one, but you know, man, when I think about number ones, I don't see like just thirty two teams and. You know, you got 32 number ones. Like, number ones, to me right now, there's only six number ones in the league right now. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see what this dude uh, can do. Uh, a lot of upside. But I like this pick right here. 23. 23. This is the Patriots, and this will be the pick that's criticized the most from my side <laughs> on my draft board. The Patriots at number 23 will select Jordan Love, the quarterback out of Utah State. You got to replace Brady. The hell with Jared Stidham, the <laughs> Auburn guy. He's okay. He's going to be a backup. He's going to do his thing. Jordan Love is special, fellas. He's Jordan leaving. Love? He's leaving as a junior. As a sophomore year, he had 32 touchdowns, six interceptions. He was special. They changed the offense on him last year, so he struggled a little bit. His numbers went down. But Jordan Love is a special quarterback. He's special athlete. What would Bill Belichick want more after a Tom Brady than to get into an athletic guy? He Another had the Tom statue. Brady. He had the statue, though, Fred. He had the guy sitting there. When you see a, a, a Lamar Jackson, when you see a, what Cam Newton did in 15, when you see these athletic quarterbacks of what the guys are doing to utilize them, Cliff Kingsbury out in XZ, when you see what they can do with athletic quarterbacks, what can Josh McDaniels and Bill Belichick do with an athletic guy with a strong arm? I think they take Jordan Love. I think they develop him, and I believe Jordan Love will start before the eighth game. He will start wow. over half the season for the Patriots. Hey, this boy going to get what, what, what I know because we got to they're going to get Jerry to get out another uh, six or seven picks, right? Um, you might have to up his pay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> somebody come and get him. After yeah, this. <laughs> seriously, this boy. Hey, so number twenty-four. All right, twenty-four the, with the twenty-fourth pick, the New Orleans Saints. I don't love this pick because I personally think the problem in New Orleans is. Coach Payton, I think he's the problem. Oh, wow. I think he's the problem. So I don't care who we draft. I don't care who we draft. It ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna work for them. They should have won two Super Bowls. You don't like Sean Payton? So this is I a... like Coach Sean Payton, but you tell him you got Drew Brees, you got Alvin Kamara, you got uh, Michael Mike Thomas. T, oh. you got uh, you had Ingram a couple years ago, and the defense was playing lights out two years ago, right. and you can't win a Super Bowl. Come on, man. So, anyways, with the twenty fourth pick. I don't even know how to say this guy's last name. Kay We're going to take K. LaVon out Tracy. of LSU. This dude is an edge rusher. We talk about beast, speed to power and athleticism off the charts. But again, K. K. LaVon, you're going to stay home, all right? But don't. Don't bank on winning the Super Bowl. Come on, man. They're going to make it to the playoffs. The pass interference with the, with the, with the Kirobe They shouldn't even been that close, man. They oh. shouldn't even been that close. But anyways, that's a 24th pick. 25. Who got 25? Freddie T, ain't it? Fred looking like. I Fred. mean, I'll take it. <laughs> Fred like, I'll take it. <laughs> it's not my pick, but I'll take it. Oh, it's my pick. Come on, coach. Come on, coach. <laughs> Come on, coach. Come on, coach. He threw the coach under the bus, and he's a coach <laughs> that 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 <laughs> he, he he coming to the damn meeting. Come late. on, Sean. You can't show him late. <laughs> All right, with the twenty fifth pick, the Minnesota Vikings take cornerback out of LSU, Christian Fulton. Beast. I have no notes on this guy. <laughs> Well, we off to <laughs> we off to the next <laughs> pick. Dude, dude, dude was a player. Dude was, was a player. I just I remember like, I'm a UF guy. All I, I watch every Florida game. He's and, SEC and guys. Yeah, I'm an SEC dude. He, he, he's solid. Uh, LSU, LSU, LSU was, was not. Was right. there, it's not mistaken that they won the championship right. this year. They had talent everywhere: front four, linebackers, secondary, receivers. Two of them going in the first round. Quarterback going number one. LSU was special and Fulton was a part of it. They have As five guys in the first round, easy. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. At the number 26 position, it's the Miami Dolphins again. If you see, we took Tua. We traded up from five to three to take Tua. Bad and then moves. we took Xavier McKinney. Took the hell with Herbert. Goofy ass. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's what I say with people that I don't. I just, when you say somebody goofy <laughs> ass, that means just, you totally minim, you know, minimize them. We have to protect them. I would have loved Makai Becton. I would have loved Andrew Thomas. <laughs> You have to protect Tua Tonga Valoa if you bring him in with the hip, getting out of there, and even um, <laughs> Ryan Fitzpatrick, who's there now. We have to now go to the tackle. We have to take a tackle in this round to solidify the whole line. They added a center. They brought in the center in free agency. They brought in Eric Flowers in free agency, a guard. They have to solidify the tackle position. 
Austin Jackson. He's a tackle out of USC. He is gigantic as well. He's just like all the other big guys, 6'6", 315, 320, can move, play well, did his thing. USC wasn't that good, so I think he kind of slid under the radar. But when I went back and watched some of his film, went back and evaluated this young man, the Makai Beckton's, the Andrew Thomas's, those tackles that went before him, he could play right there with him. But if you look at it, UGA was a better team. Yeah. They were top 10, so you were seeing those guys. I think, and I think um, uh, Austin hey, Jackson uh, is going is to be that here, guy. He's so passionate mind. about football. He's so passionate about college football. He over here is selling us. I don't <laughs> – when you think about – bro, you on ESPN right now. <laughs> <laughs> you, gave me, you gave me some picks. I'm going to pick these motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Fred, got nothing to do. All I do is hey, sit at home. Fred, he over here talking. Home. I'm believing everything he's saying. Y'all know what IXL is with the kids? Man, you wild, that home, Y'all know what IXL.com, the homeschool <laughs> shit? Yeah. Anytime I get IXL out the way, I get to go do this shit. That's what I, that's what I love. All right, cool. So where we at right now? 27. We're number 27. It's a great number. Seattle <laughs> Seahawks. Uh, Josh Jones. Tackle. Houston. Houston put up. Tons and tons of points yeah. on the offense. So rightfully so, this kid can pass block. He's very athletic. You know, someone who's going to get in there and protect the quarterback. Uh, even in the run game, he gets to the next level effortlessly. Uh, I think uh, going in there, you know, he's going to do a great job for Russell Wilson and that'll just make the offense better. Yeah. So the 27th pick, Josh Jones. All right. Cool. I like it. 28 is Baltimore. Their defense, you know what they do on defense. So they brought Calais Campbell in. Mm -hmm. I think they're as uh, Yeeter Gro Gross Motos. He's an edge rusher out of Penn State. Very raw, very young, very little. He's 260. He's an old, outside linebacker DN. They're going to work him into the system and try to get him right. Did his thing at Penn State. Great stats aren't there, but he has the body type at 6'5", 260, and he's just going to be a project that they can work into that 3-4 system that's been working so long for them. And be Mars, if you keep looking at me like that, like I got a god <laughs> egg sitting on my head, I'm going to knock your ass out. Bro, You, this is the NFL draft. This is supposed to be a good moment. You opened up talk, drafting this guy, just crushing him. What's <laughs> he got to do much? <laughs> so why you picking him? Because he, he has the ability to do something. You okay. close-minded. Okay. See, you got to see you. I, you got to see it to do it. I, I, got, I can see... I can see a batter and know a cake. Okay. You need to see the cake to know the cake. I can just see a motherfucking <laughs> egg and flour sitting there and, you and see know. like, that's going to be a good ass cake. Okay. I so he's going to be rookie of the year. He's going to be up for rookie. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go to Tennessee. You had a lot of battles with them boys. I had a ton of battles with the Titans. Uh, even in the AFC Championship, unfortunately, they fell short. But that's okay. They're going to address the need. So with the 29th pick, uh, the Tennessee Titans to select A.J. Terrell. Cornerback out of Clemson, uh, 44240 guy. Mm. He's long, extremely rangy, uh, great impress man to man coverage. Mm. That's all you need to know. I think uh, I like when he gets down there to Tennessee with their style of defense, you know, they want to play cover one. Uh, they want to give the front guys an opportunity to get after the quarterback. Uh, and I think they're going to try and do some things to di disrupt. The AFC South, so like it. I, I, I like this pick for us. All right, well, let's go to the thirtieth pick. Uh, we're gonna go to the frozen tundra, the Green Bay Packers. This is the true X receiver. Fred, you're a running back, man. I'm telling you, you know, all running backs love the X receiver. Their backside, they draw the one-on-one -on -one coverage. Usually, they're in the they're to the boundary, so they got the short side of the field to yep. work. That's Usually the quarterbacks go to guy. This guy, um, I'm not saying he's going to be a star, but he's he fits well into this system. T. Higgins, wide receiver out of Clemson. When you think about Aaron Rodgers, I know we've been talking about all the young guys the last two years or so, from Dak Prescott to um, your guy in uh, Kansas City, Mahomes, uh, Lamar Jackson. Uh, you kind of forget about Aaron Rodgers. Don't forget Aaron Rodgers. He, He's a he, he's a dude now. All right, he can still go. Uh, and when you think about Aaron Rodgers, one of the things that he's always been the best at is throwing his guys open. And this guy is the classic back shoulder wide receiver, true X receiver. So I love this pick uh, for this specific team. That's where I'm going. Cool. How how, how was that? Was that, that was good? good? Yeah. It seemed like I could. You seemed like you I knew something. Yeah, yeah. A little work. 
You ain't no ex. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with the 31st oh, pick, the 2020 draft, San Fran selects another cornerback in Jeff Gladney, cornerback out of Texas Christian. That's two cornerbacks. You throw him in there with Henderson, with that front four, Bro. he's going to get things done. He's mm. not as big as Henderson. He's a smaller guy. He's about 5'10", 190 pounds, soaking wet. But he's extremely fast. And, again, he's going to get after the quarterback, not – He's going to get after the receivers because of the play of the front four. Yeah. And I think you're going to see a San Francisco team who's going to dominate their conference. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Well, no, I like him, but I don't like y'all strategy and San Fran. Two cornerbacks? Bro? Two two cornerbacks. All right. You said we're you building said for the, the best future. GM, though. Best GM. Ever. All right. I'm hey, going to go to the. We're building for the future. Let, me, let me work my magic. The future is now. You got to win. <laughs> no, no, no. Let me work bro, you my win, magic. Though. Did you see the defense last year? Awesome. Okay. <laughs> yeah. we, we, okay. We All right, let time. me go to the 32nd pick, Kansas City Chiefs. DeAndre Swift uh, is a guy that I really wanted here. I can't go with him. Running oh, back what? out of Georgia. I know. I know you what? love him, bro. I know. Ooh. But but to me, I got to go with a sleeper. I got to go with a sleeper. Antoine Winfield Jr. Who is that? Bro, who is that? You know who that is. <laughs> bro, I'm telling you. Bro, I went against his pops. And when I tell you uh, just, it, like, just just amazing football IQ, just through the roof. You I mean, talking about got, Bob Winfield? Bro. With the, with the loose eye? With the, with the four? Nah. Four no, man. He, no. He's Bob, he was in this is, this oh, is probably, okay. to me, to me, when you Winfield talk about some of the greatest back. corners ever, Oh. Right. He's never in a discussion, and he should be in a discussion, bro. Like, this dude was one of the best competitors, one of the best corners I ever – one of the best football players I ever went against. So, off of the strength of his father, because he's really a second-round guy, but off the strength of his father, I'm pulling the trigger on this guy. Yeah. This dude could potentially be a 12-, 13-year guy. Um, you know, his pedigree speaks for itself. So, I'm going to go with Junior – with the 32nd pick. And we need it. I got Mahomes. I got a couple of receivers. I got my tight end. You know, so I'm good there. And I got Andy Reid. So I'm going to go shore up my defense a little bit more. You going, you the drafting info. dudes off their daddy? Off their daddy, bro. Off their daddy? What? Yes. Come on, man. Daddy Who, was where on were you when my son was coming out? About to say, <laughs> we need a first round. Hey, we got to get hey, some Three years ago. Chan -chan four years ago. Thing right now. Hey, I like the thought process, but yeah. I don't know. Who won the draft? Pick. I don't know about that pick. You don't know about that pick. Just just watch. That's kind of like I mean, you, that's kind of like what you said with San Francisco is like we're built and for the future. We're confident. You know, so it's the same. You're, you're not so confident about that pick. We're confident. <laughs> well, well, look, here's my thinking. Yeah, I the mean, thirty second pick. You know, it's like ah, uh, you know, what do you mean? he's a sec because uh. he's a second round guy. What, he's what's a, that? He's uh. a, he, he can go. He can go. You know, it, it sounds like uh, a young B Marsh. <laughs> he was out partying, didn't want to do the homework. You know, not necessarily focus on the job at hand. Mm -hmm. Bro, and, I had to search and, and, and for this. the pick came in as a, as a, eh. As a, eh. <laughs> I had to search high and low for this one. You're reaching. Bro. That, that, that's what happened. You're reaching. Turn on the film like Channing said. You was reaching. All right, who won the NFL draft, the, the mock draft, the I Am Athlete draft? Oh. I feel good about, I feel good about my teams. I really do. I, not even because we're in Miami, man. The Dolphins, not even off their picks or off my picks with them. Having three first round picks. If you can't change your team with three yeah. first round picks, I think you're doing a bad job. Chris Greer, Reggie McKenzie, Stephen Ross, the Dolphin Brass, you have three first rounders. You can change your team, change your, your outcome of years to come with three first round picks. The Dolphins have to win this draft this year. I don't know if they did in ours, but they have to win the draft with three first rounders. Yeah. I mean, or you can just dress up the in stadium club live. So when you do lose, the fans will forget that Fred, they, Fred, that you don't Fred, you, Fred, you, Fred, you, Fred, you yeah, been to yeah, live. You been to live. Yeah, I have. Fred. Ooh. I mean, it's great. Post game. That's Fred. the place to be. Win, lose, Ooh. draw. Post, post game. <laughs> yeah, they tripping for that. I'm, I'm going to tell you, that's why we, why I feel like the Dolphins, I, I love it. I hear what you're saying. But that's one of the reasons, Fred, why, why I feel like the Dolphins will never win. Too many distractions down here. You were distracted when you played here? No, I was I was my own distraction when I was here. But you already know. I was a part of your distraction. Yes, I know. Because you, you ain't no one to just go home, bro. Take me a nap. 
We party and go take naps, Fred. B. Marshall right. want to keep running and running. Man, we could have used we could have used them in Jacksonville. In Jacksonville, they didn't yeah, use we could have used them. He got nice. he got his shorts that match the uniform. We would have been nice. So they we could have definitely used them. Nice. Hold on, I think hold on, we could. Who was the quarterback? 2006, 2010. Garrard. Oh, I could have worked with him. No, nah, Garrard was nice. Yeah, yeah. I could have worked with him. DG was real nice. Yeah, all he had. We DG just, took us to the playoffs. Yeah, um, yeah. We beat Pittsburgh twice in three weeks. In a matter of three weeks, they were solid. And then we end up losing to an undefeated yeah. New England team. All uh, right, so let, let yeah. me get, all right, we're going into the draft. Um, Channing, you feel like the Dolphins won the draft? Have to, have, they have to win the draft. Okay, uh, Fred, any final thoughts with the draft? I like our picks in Jacksonville. You like your picks in Jacksonville? Yeah, I, I like the picks in Jacksonville. We addressed, we replaced. Well, y'all uh, some real homers. I can't say we replaced Calais Campbell, but I think Derrick Brown is going to be a solid pick uh, at number nine. And then right there at uh, number 20, uh with justin jefferson addressing some needs obviously he's a guy that's going to go in there and compete for that number two wide receiver uh, uh, uh slot and if he doesn't make that slot he has an opportunity to play in the slot yeah alongside dj chark who's also another lsu guy only uh two years removed from lsu so those guys know each other and uh being able to you know, get together, study together, hang out together. I, I think that's going to expedite his learning curve. And he's going to get out there and make some things happen early for the Jaguars. So I like, I, I, I like what we did there. All right. Well, hey, episode one, appreciate you guys tuning in. A timely discussion with the NFL draft right around the corner, April 23rd, um, predicting that there's going to be minimum 70 million people live streaming this event. Uh, it's really cool to see what they're doing uh, for all of our people on the front line. So big ups to the NFL. Uh, Roger, appreciate you coming on our podcast. You're not shaving in your man cave or whatever you call it. Born. Uh, you're born. Um, <laughs> But anyways, I am athlete, episode one, peace. We had to fight to get a meal, yeah, wrongfully accused. We had to fight to get a pill. That's why we right to get a deal. He on the team, he gotta eat, you know, despite the skills. Keep it riding for the fam, you gotta like the wheels. Is on. Is on.